Like, hello! <laughs> Welcome to tonight's presentation on bacteria, viruses, uh, and this encompasses a lot of information. We're, really only, we're not going to take all evening discussing this. I could, because you know me, I can talk for 17 straight hours. Ah! <laughs> and I could never sit down. Uh, but for tonight, I really want you to leave at the end of this presentation, uh, or if you're watching it online, to be able to understand the difference between bacteria and viruses and how the body's immune system is absolutely your defense against everything. If you've ever had cancer, you've had a faulty immune system. If you've ever gotten a common cold or a flu or any kind of virus or bacteria, you have a faulty immune system. When when your immune system is working super well, very well, you don't have any viruses or bacteria that can overtake the body. And you're going to learn how that works. So I'm super excited to share this with you. Uh, we will be call we will also be covering a little bit of Ebola because we want, well, I know a lot about Ebola, by the way. I've been studying it for about 10, um, several, several months uh, and watching the progress. And so I want you to be aware of what's going on because it's in America. We can't hide that. It's going to be in most countries. Uh, it will spread through America, period. Don't, okay. <laughs> I can't like put you in a fear monger mode. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, even though I agree with a lot of them, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, but I want you to be aware that we won't have the same mortality rate when people have this information, which is why this is being publicly, you know, given away. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and kind of talk about those situations so you know how to prepare yourself. So the first thing we want to talk about is the difference between a bacteria and a virus, because they're very different. They're completely different. A bacteria is a cell, it's a cell organism. So it actually has, a bacteria is a single cell uh, organism, and it literally has DNA and RNA that, li that lives inside of a cytoplasm. So it has a cell. As we know, what do cells have? Respiratory systems, they have digestive systems, they have reproductive systems, they have you know, all the systems you have, each cell has, a receptor site sticking off all over them. So you've got your cell, and you have these little antennas called receptor sites that poke out all over that cell. And those receptor sites are looking for a signal. You can only make a cell do something by activating a signal, and you do that using a molecular frequency like eat the apple, eat something physical, or an electromagnetic frequency. So that's a bacteria. It's a single cell organism. And bacteria are uh, intercellular. They actually live outside of the cells in your body. So a bacteria can get in the body and they can just maneuver outside of the cells. So this, the bacteria will live outside of the cells. They come in different shapes, rods, spheres, and spirals. So you'll hear of different forms of bacteria. You'll see different colors of bacteria, uh, and, and shapes of bacteria when you're looking at things online. Uh, they are much bigger than a virus. A virus is about 10 to 100 times smaller than a bacteria. So bacteria are much, much larger. And um, they grow on non-living surfaces. So bacteria can grow in your kitchen. Bacteria can grow anywhere. They can grow on toilet seats. They can grow on you know, on particles, they can grow at the hardware store. Okay, bar, you know, part they can grow on non-living surfaces. Um, they have, they're also very good. A lot of bacteria are very, very good. Uh, we always hear bacteria and think evil, but actually most of your bacteria are completely harmless or actually very good for you. Uh, you wouldn't be digesting all that wonderful food unless you had really great good bacteria in the gut for digestive health. So when we you that's why Karen is completely against any kind of antibacterial soap, Oh, save the bacteria! Because okay, you have so many good bacteria. And when you douse yourself in all those antibacterial soaps, my heart just goes, ew, you know, please, save me. There's all these millions of bacteria and thousands of bacteria in the body that are actually very good. And they reproduce and they keep you really healthy. So there's other ways to get rid of a bacterial infection without killing all of your good bacteria. You need your good bacteria. That will help you in your defense against cancer, flu, viruses. Or, so I know how weird that must sound, you know, you're getting, you're, you're going to get, go ahead and get things like strep and E. coli and H. pylori and staph. Those are different bacteria. Those are just some examples of what a bacteria is, but yet bacteria can also fight off viruses. Viruses can live on top of a bacteria. So there's a lot of, like, okay, this body that we have of ours, shielded by this beautiful skin, so you never have an idea what's going on <clears throat> until you have an outbreak of some course or you feel uncomfortable. But inside this body, we have an amazing system and it, we, we have have 70 to 100 trillion cells. That sounds impressive. All of those cells have all of their own systems. You also have blood and lymph. It's all you're made of, cells, blood and lymph. But you also are a host. <laughs> and inside your body, you've got parasites, viruses, and flukes, and bacteria. So you have all of these organisms and some of them are not like alive, like viruses aren't alive. You have these things growing in the body and living 
And guess what? Some of them get hungry. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the hungry bacteria, okay? The, the things that are alive in the body, and you're the host, so guess what? You're craving food, right? You're craving certain things because they're hungry and you have to feed them because you are now enslaved. So bacteria, again, single cell, live outside of the cell uh, and they can grow and grow. They form their own colonies. They're very, they're very colony organized. Uh, and then we have viruses and viruses are intracellular. They're actually, they're sneaky devils of virus. And I love the immune system. You're gonna love how we were created to combat a virus. The, the, a virus will actually come into the body and it'll come in the body uh, through touching a different surface. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But once the virus gets into the body, it literally can latch on any cell in the body. So a virus can come in and it'll latch onto a cell and it'll go inside of the cell and it'll hide inside of a cell. And when the virus gets inside of the cell, it pulls all of its little fragments in as much as it can and it hides inside the cell and then it takes over. <laughs> it is just genetic material. A virus is not alive. It's not like growing, knocking on the door to its neighbor, asking for you know <laughs> any kind of receptor site signals. It's not. It is literally just genetic material, RNA and DNA, or RNA and uh, or DNA, that's encoded in like a protein coat. So there's just this virus that floats in the body and then gets into a cell and then it takes over the cell. And so if the cell was a liver cell and it's supposed to be creating a new liver cell, the, the complex organization of the virus will take over the liver cell, reprogram the cell to create its own DNA or RNA. Isn't that creepy and evil? Woo! <laughs> They're bad. So viruses are very, very sneaky and very dangerous. So viruses are intracellular. They live inside of a cell. They're very small, 10 to 100 times smaller than bacteria. They live off of your host. Uh, anyhow, and they, they literally reside in the body. Now, a vaccination, you've heard of vaccinations. Vaccinations are for viruses. A vaccination will induce a watered down, a less um, uh, prominent attributes of a certain virus so that it makes your body want to kill it. So just like, and that's why we don't use vaccinations because they usually contain a lot of very harmful ingredients like mercury, which is an immune suppressor, so kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, anyhow, but what we do is we use homeopathy, like kills life, use no sodes. No sodes are those particles that are exactly the same. So you can do the same thing that vaccination is doing uh, by, by introducing a lesser form of a virus. So the body starts creating antibiotics to it, antibodies to it. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So the differences, and we have listed here a couple of the, um, couple of the different viruses you might be familiar with. Uh, your cold viruses, your HIV, hepatitis, West Nile virus, smallpox, chickenpox, your flu, you have A and B strains. Your flu viruses are always changing. Cold viruses are changing. The flu virus changes all the time and mutates, just like Ebola is mutating. And so you can't really capture it and then make a, a vaccination for it because it's gonna change by the next year. That's why they have a new flu vaccine every single year. And that's so, so you understand vaccinations and homeopathy, they're in, and we believe very strongly vaccinations were intended for a very good purpose. And when they were first introduced, they did some really wonderful things because they were clean. Uh, and then we, we, they're not so clean anymore. Uh, anyhow, so you can all base your own opinions on that after you do research. We definitely encourage you to educate before you vaccinate. We know a lot, <laughs> so we encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, anyhow, so they create that weaker version. Now, when the body gets, how does the body get a bacteria? How does it get a virus? What happens in, in, in the body? How, do, how does this function? Well, you have four ways in the body and four ways out. So there's four ways to get in the body and there's four ways to get out of the body, and that's it. It's not too complicated. You have your mouth, the most tasty way to get something in the body, not that bacteria and viruses are tasty, but, but I love my, I just had a whole entire thing of pomegranates, so I'm in heaven right now, okay? Love my immune system, so it was tasty. So in your mouth, you also go through your skin. When things get on your skin, they can go right in your bloodstream, especially at the end of your fingertips, right? So you can put things right into your bloodstream by putting it on your skin. You can also get things in your body by breathing them. <gasps> Okay, everything you breathe is going to go into your respiratory tract, right? And boom, it's going to go right into your bloodstream and, and be delivered to every cell in your body. And then you can also 
have things bring, brought into the skin uh, through through the bottom of your body so you can do different uh, enemas to get things into the body uh, and so there any of the holes in your body are ways to get into the body kind of think of it that way and you're very porous individual those are the same ways to get out and so when we're looking at how did you get a bacteria how did you pick something up it's really quite easy you go ahead and you reach the door handle and then you rub your nose a little bit and whoop, that was easy boom right into the nose and it goes right in the body and attacks the body so you can look at different ways of getting into the body and when you actually realize the different ways you can be picking up something you get a little nervous and that's this is the part that gets a little uncomfortable because you know you've all you've all been there you've all done that you've all walked into something and you've touched a door handle you've pushed a cart and then you get itches in your eyes or whatever and you're like oh my gosh what did I just put in my body the minute it gets in your body well it's so much out of your control you physically can't do anything anymore now it's dependent on your immune system so how do you get things in the body what should be looking for uh, regarding any kind of virus, including Ebola, is surfaces. Because viruses can also be airborne when you cough or when you sneeze, that virus is in the bodily fluids. And if that lands on something, on a doorknob, on a container, and then you touch the container and you rub your eyes, it can go in your skin. So you can get things from surfaces, period. That's, that's for all viruses, depending on how fresh that is. Pardon me? How long does the virus live? Viruses can live depending on the host, that is on how large it's grown, what host it's living on. So viruses can actually live in for very, very, very long time. They can be frozen for for pymonials uh, so you can freeze a virus for an extended period of time but on a surface how long but on a surface it, well, it just depends on what it's living on what cell what the cell how, how long it's been some of them die within five minutes some of them will die in hours so and some of them can live longer than that so that's where we come in that's a bit more how much mucus was there left on the surface when you go to use the public toilet disgusting right what you've seen on some of those public <clears throat> on the public seats how long has that been there? How long has it been wet? What could be in there? You go to the bathroom and you know some of it comes up when the when they that automatic flush thing always wants to scare me to death. That's not a safe feature, okay? Because you're flushing and all of a sudden you have all sorts of things that are entering your body through the bottom of your body. Uh, and so you have to be you become very aware of how are things coming into the body and how should I be able to protect myself. So of course you can do that. You can protect yourself. You can always be washing your hands, you can be wearing plastic gloves, you can be wearing shielding masks, you can do those things to protect yourself. We do that. I travel a lot and I have a lot of traveling coming up and it's made me a little nervous I'm like oh this will be just lovely you know it's kind of and we've talked about it as a family we've done a lot of you know soul searching what do we do here uh, and so you know we're gonna be traveling if things are still where they are right now and wearing protective and you know not a whole suit but I'll be quite protective and I do have a pretty strong immune system so I'm really happy for that uh, however it's just being aware of how you can protect yourself and where do these viruses and bacteria come into the body now, your immune system is what's fantastic. And I want to cover a little bit about the immune system. You literally have three immunity uh, systems. You have that natural immunity that you're born with. And when you're born with a natural immunity, and of course it's far, far, far better for you if you've nursed from your mother. If you've nursed from your mother, you have a much more powerful natural immunity than if you got your 50% of sugar intake with every single bottle of your uh, baby fed um, pro, uh, formula. Which, by the way, most of your formulas, if you read the ingredients and look at the ratios, are over 50% sugar. So it's very dangerous what we're feeding our children. And sugar is what? The greatest immune suppressor there is. <laughs> Feed yourself sugar, you lose an immune system. Period. Uh, so very important to know that if you are able to breastfeed your child, if you're still in that age of um, having children, breastfeed your children because this natural immunity is literally like getting a playbook handed to the baby. Here's how you fight off a cold. Here's because it's all cell memory. This is cell memory. Your mom's figured it out. Your grandma's figured it out. Here's a whole bunch of cell memory for you. Oh, I gotta love cell memory. Okay, and cell memory plays a big role through the, the uh, acquired immunity as well. So natural immunity is your body already knows how to fight off all these different viruses, all these different illnesses. Thank you, mom. Okay, no, thank you. That was lovely. Okay, so then, then we go on to acquired immunity which is also called adaptive immunity. Um, this is probably my favorite immunity because I really love how the body functions. You, uh, you have this cell memory. So I had chicken pox when I was a little girl. So I had chicken pox when I was a little girl and I got all itchy and I put cam my mom put camile lotion, the pink stuff all over you, put you in an oatmeal bath, fed you pudding, right? Love it, okay, so, so I had my chicken pox. Well, my body at some point kicked in and figured out, hey, 
I know what this is and I'm going to learn how to kill it. These are the proteins I'm going to pull together that will kill this chicken pox and then miracles happen. So let's say, so in your body you've got all these different cells. Let's say cell number 4562X figured out how to kill the chicken pox virus. Whoa! Okay, now when, it, when that happens, it's going to pass its cell memory to its two daughter cells. So this one cell will pass its memory of how to kill chicken pox. What proteins did it put together? What polypeptides? What, what did it do to kill that cell and pass it to two daughter cells? Now you have two daughter cells who know how to get rid of chicken pox. And then they grow and divide. You got four, you got eight, you guys. So all of a sudden you have this, you've got these cells that are like, hey, we know how to get rid of this. Now you keep your body really healthy. And for the rest of your life, if you're exposed to that virus, your body already knows how to kill it. So if it comes in the body, you're like, oh, I got this. So any of our children, and by the way, I'm a holistic healthcare practitioner. I didn't do my introduction. My name is Karen Urbanic. Uh, we've raised 10 children. We now have 11. One kind of came to us later in life. So she's, she calls us mom, we call her daughter, so it's kind of fun, we love her to pieces. And so those children have been raised with, they got an ear infection, I didn't freak out about it. I took care of their temperature, made sure things are good, and then their body created this acquired and adaptive immunity. And so then they had one ear infection, only a couple of them ever got an ear infection, but they, got, they, they had an ear infection, their body created their own antibiotics against it, and then guess what? Never another ear infection, never, 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 never because we kept their bodies really clean, free of mucus. Milk is not, do your body good, <laughs> okay, <gasps> poison. Anyhow, we kept their bodies free of mucus and then their cell memory was passed down. So even to this day, wherever they go, if they get that virus, that may be the same as what they're exposed to when they were younger, their cell memory is able to kick butt that virus. Oh, so that's adaptive immunity. So it's a lot of fun. I actually wrote a little uh, part in my book I wanted to read. I love painting, I'm painting metaphors. And in the book, we've got a whole section on, on acquired immunity, artificial immunity, understanding the immune system, T cells, B cells, we'll, we'll cover some of it. But I wrote this. <clears throat> For example, <laughs> if a thief comes into a store wearing a purple cloak with white stripes, the cloak is the antigen. Oh, it's a bad guy, okay? You catch him stealing on your video camera, which is your B or T cells. They recognize the, th the thief, right? And then you call the police. They arrest and take the thief away. The police are the white blood cells. You post a picture of the thief on the front counter. The counter is your cell memory. And then all the employees know what the thief looks like. So if he comes again, bam, your camera, the BT cells, recognizes the antigen, the purple cloak with the white stripes. You dial the police, the white blood cells, and the perpetrator, the perpetrator is eliminated. Oh, and that's just fun. So that's how it works in your body. Your body literally can recognize what's going on and be able to kill it. So important, very important. Now your body can only do that if it's healthy. This is your immune system right here. Naturally, you got from your mom, thank you, so sad, it's over now. <laughs> Unless you want to start breastfeeding really late in life, okay? Beg your mother right now, weird. And so then you have adaptive or acquired immunity. You're doing that right now. This is the phase you are in right now. You must have a healthy body because those, pro here's how it works, those proteins that are gathered to kill off a virus or bacteria are literal proteins. They are, they're a combination of amino acids. If you don't have all the amino acids you need in your body, well then how the heck are your cells gonna be able to form proteins to kill something? So I take a step back, you have to have the building blocks to build the Lego picture on the front of the box, <laughs> okay? So if you don't have the Legos, you can't build the picture. If you don't have amino acids, you can't build the proteins that are going to kick butt your viruses. So how do you get a healthy immune system? You make sure you have all of the building blocks you need so your body can create and pass down cell memory. Oh, where's my button? Here we go. That was easy. I know. Thank you very much. So this is easy. This is not like rocket science, right? So. Then, we, I know, I stopped saying rocket science because rocket science is easy. It's just formulas. I've now figured that out. So I always say neuroscience. That's a little harder, okay? So this, this, is, this is not neuroscience. Now, you also have artificial immunity. Artificial immunity is your vaccinations or using no-sodes or using homeopathy. So your body can, 
it no soda is a diseased material. Uh, a no soda is a diseased material. A material a sour coat is a positive material uh, that's clean. So like um, for instance, we we do biofeedback, uh, and our biofeedback unit. We had someone come in who was very sick, and so we took her her snot. We had her blow her nose. We had mucus from her and spit, and we we imprinted that into the computer as a no sode. So now we have diseased material. We put the diseased material into the unit. And then we created a homeopathy against of that diseased material. Then we gave her body the diseased material in a lesser form. Like heals like. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what a no it is. And so, hey, uh, and homotoxicology is just amazing. We should probably do a class on homotoxicology so you can actually see how disease progresses and then you can stop disease and have it go backwards. It's just fascinating. So let's write that down so I get, I get a class done on homotoxicology. Okay, so now we look at what kind of cells do we have in our body. We've got our B cells. So B cells are, so our, our, our lymphocytes, which you've heard the word lymphocytes, that's really your B cells and your T cells. And so the white blood cells. And your B cells are always designed to kill one specific thing. They like have a job. And they look through the body and they look for that one thing. They like keep the body at rest. You've got T cells. Your T cells use receptors to attach to things. So they're looking, they're like floating around in your bloodstream. You've got them all right now. And they're flowing through your bloodstream and they're looking for things that they need to kill. Things that should not be in the body. And then you've got your killer cells and they're wicked. They're the big guns, okay? Your killer cells are awesome. They've, they're like spies in the body. You're going to love this part. Your cells are fascinating. If a cell gets infected with a virus, it will literally create, it'll create a blinking red light, okay, an MHC. A blinking red light, it doesn't really blink, I just called it a blinking red light, but an MHC inside the cell. So on the surface of the cell, you can actually see this blink, not blinking, but this MHC sticking off of it. Ooh, and that means, hey, I am infected, kill me. So these natural killer cells come along and they're looking for these little blinking lights, these MHS, F MHCs, right? And when it finds one, it attacks the cell and completely kills the cell. Your cells are on your side. If one of your little 70 to 100 trillion cells gets infected with the virus, it puts up a red flag and says, hey, kill me. Now, not all of them can do that. But they do. A lot of them do. That's wonderful. So then you have this really strong immune system because you've been strengthening your immune system with all these great immune enhancing products you can buy from all over the world. And you've strengthened your immune system so your natural killer cells come in and obliterate the virus. So you have three forms of an immune system. The natural one, you can't go back. But you can go forward if you're a young mother who can nurse. You have your acquired immunity which you are going ahead and creating right now, your aphogenic immunity, you're working at that right now. How strong is your immune system? How much, can you strengthen it? What's the cell memory like? Do I have everything I need to build the proteins to fight off my virus? And then you have your artificial, your vaccines, your no-sodes, your homeopathy. So you have these ways of making the body aware of an invader. It's really like you have your own Vivint system, you know, <laughs> they have protection. My daughter sells Vivint, so I said Vivint. But anyhow, your own protection against your home, you have that inside the body. How do you strengthen it? What do you do if it, if it stinks? You know, what if it do is if it's the batteries are all dead? <laughs> you know, what can we do? So uh, anyhow, important to note, viruses can live in the body for decades. So you can have viruses, and this happens, what is shingles? Ah, chicken pox you have when you were five or six years old. And it's been in your body for 30 or 40 or 20 or 70 years, and then your immune system decreases, and they are called opportunistic organisms. You can have bacteria, you can have emotions, you can have viruses that live in the body, for a very long time, and those are called opportunistic organisms because they wait for the opportunity to go, whoa, take it over. Your immune system sucks so I can proliferate. <laughs> that virus is now strong enough to, to take over that cell and create all of its own viral. Kind of see how that spreads? And all of a sudden you've got a virus that spreads to the entire body because your immune system couldn't contain it anymore. It contained it for 30 years. It contained it for 40 years. But now your immune system is weak 
because we don't exercise, we don't eat correctly, we are suppressed terribly by the foods and the products that we use on our body. And we'll talk about suppressants in a little bit here. And so all of a sudden our immune system is suppressed, it is not strengthened, and we get shingles, we get sick. We've worked with people that we've done testing on we worked with that lady who had gotten sick. We actually tested her. She had a virus that was in her body from when she ate at some place in North Carolina, some seafood. That's what got her 20 years later. Well, now how crazy is that? Of course, she got rid of it because her immune system got strengthened really quick. So it's understanding how the immune system works to fight off a bacteria or a virus that's going to put you in charge of your health. So I could sit here and sell you a whole bunch of products, but what's that going to do if you don't understand why? I can give you a recipe book, but what, what are you going to do with that if you don't understand why? What's happening at the cell level? That's why at Karen's Energy, all of us are so pumped up about getting you as much information as possible so you understand the why. Uh, anyhow, so many of you have these opportunist organisms, and some of you who've gone through detox uh, programs with us, all of a sudden you realize you have an opportunistic organism because you get sick when you go through a detox program. That's okay. You're releasing it from the cells where it's been hiding, and then your immune system takes care of it. That's how these work. So if we sit back and we look at, okay, how do we avoid it? How do we strengthen it? Let's talk about those suppressants. There are some no-nos. The things that you need to do, the things you must change in your life so you can strengthen your immune system is you need to stop suppressing your immune system. You literally can't suppress it. Uh, we have a list of some things that are, uh, that are immune suppressants, and a lot of them you're going to find in your non-organic food, your pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, biocides, larvicides, what are all of those designed to do? Kill living systems. Uh, are you alive? Raise your hand. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm alive. Oh, okay. So we're alive. So why would we consume a pesticide, herbicide, larvicide, or any biocide if we're living? And they're designed to kill living systems. Those are neurotoxic to our body. They will, they will cause issues in the body. They are immune suppressant, period. Mercury is a huge immune suppressant. I don't care what kind of fish you're eating, make sure it's mercury free. I don't care what kind of vitamins you're taking, make sure it's mercury free. And make sure every vaccination you're ever forced to have is mercury free. Because they're dangerous. Children aren't like born screwed up. Where they came up with vaccinating children, I have no idea. Because you're, you're taking a brand new perfect baby and you're putting a mercury, which is an immune suppressant, right into the body. Mm -hmm. And like far more than, a than an adult is even allowed to have. So please understand suppressants. Okay, other suppressants are going to be your processed and cooked foods. A lot of your processed and cooked foods that are overcooked, uh, anything ground into a grain at a high temperature is going to be immune suppressing. Your vegetable oils, canola oils, soybean oils, and all of your genetically modified ingredients are literally immune suppressors. Um, you're going to look at things like prescription drugs and deodorants, antiperspirants, chemicals are immune suppressants. Now, why would they suppress the immune system? Because you just gave your body a whole lot more to do. So your body can live and all of your cells live in one state, a sympathetic state or a parasympathetic state, a state of growth, which is your parasympathetic, or a state of fear. <coughs> if you give your body all these toxins to deal with and you've got candida and you've got all these issues going on in the body, how are you going to fight off a viral infection? You can't because you are already dealing with so much else. So how do you relieve the body? How do you strengthen the immune system? You start with square one, which is just realizing that you've been doing a lot of suppressants to the immune system and then start strengthening the immune system. How do you strengthen the immune system? The five basic ways to get healthy, the five basic ways to get sick are exactly the same. You get cancer five ways, you get rid of cancer five ways. You get lupus five ways, you get rid of lupus five ways. You get epilepsy five ways, you get rid of epilepsy five ways. Now I made this up. I got rid of my epilepsy. We've had a lot of our clients get rid of cancer, lupus, Crohn's, Crohn's disease. We see it all the time. How do you get rid of it? One of five ways. Write these down. These are important. We actually have a new series come out. You're the first group to, under to know about our new series. It's called the Five Step Program. And it's a five step program that you can register for online or take in person. And you will come and it's 10 hours. And we are spending those hours only talking about these five things. Number one, what you eat and what you drink. Number one thing, what you eat and you drink. Another way, to grow cancer or get rid of cancer or to help with anything in the body, a strong immune system or a weak immune system is what you're drinking 
I'm sorry, what you're putting on your skin. So what you put on your skin is very, very important and treating of the skin. Vitamin D bearing, extremely important to get a lot of vitamin D through the sun. You also are affected by what you breathe. So everything you breathe, every single thing, every single breath you're taking right now is putting something into your cells, period. All of the air is contributing to your cell makeup. Your thoughts, because your thoughts have frequencies, so those frequencies of thoughts you have and the thoughts of those around you, we do a lot with frequencies. And then your electromagnetic frequencies and dirty electricity and Wi-Fi. So these five categories are very broad, but very basic. And when you change each of those categories, you change the cell context. So with your immune system, we watch what we eat and we drink. We're eating more living foods. We're doing a lot more berries. We're doing a lot more garlic, cayenne, ginger. We're doing anti, uh, antiviral foods. We're doing antibacterial foods. We're eating a lot of foods that are strengthening the body and creating a healthy immune system. And that's what we want to be doing. So you want to create this healthy immune system. And creating a healthy immune system, I throw a whole bunch of things up here just so I wouldn't forget to talk about them. Obviously, a lot, of, a lot of issues that people deal with right now is candida. Candida is that yeast overgrowth. If you're craving sugar, you feel fatigue, you've got any kind of uh, secretions, your elbows, foot, um, itchy, you know, foot um, and, and fungus on the feet, uh, you have a constant yeast infection, you're probably looking at candida. A lot of people in America are deeply affected by candida. You can kill candida. This is, it's not a myth that you have to live with it forever. Uh, you just need to crack through the outer shell of candida and then kill off the candida. So using something like Candex is the one enzyme uh, protocol that we love the most. Enzymes eat through things, they break things apart. And so the enzymes found in Candex will help, uh, and that's just like this, this bottle here you've probably seen, uh, and that will help break through the candida. And then we recommend a black walnut or our pear, a pear away formula to kill the candida. So that's a big thing. You wanna take the stress off of the body so your body can now fight for your health. How can your, you know, how can your killer cells be finding anything when your body is so much of your energy of your body is still going to feed candida and help clear up the bloodstream? So we have to look at how to clean the body up. While you're cleaning up the body, you want to look at things you can do for your liver. A liver and gallbladder formula, very important. Milk thistle uh, for the liver. You want to clean up the liver so that that liver can handle all of these chemicals, all of the biocides, insecticides, larvicides that you have in your body because you've been consuming them for decades. That has to go to the liver to be filtered out of the body. Uh, and then the things that you can use. Obviously, um, olive leaf is going to be very, very uh, practical. We use olive leaf extensively for getting rid of shingles, by the way. Uh, you can all... I'm not here to tell you to stop taking any kind of prescription drugs because I can't. That would be illegal. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so I can simply tell you how to strengthen your body. Okay, all right. Um, and so taking olive leaf has been, historically speaking, found very uh, helpful in getting rid of shingles and in getting rid of a lot of different viruses. So olive leaf, you can take a tincture of olive leaf. All, all of these things I talked about, you can take in different forms. Tinctures, capsules, powdered, fresh. Okay, there are also like olive leaves or leaves of olives, guys. Okay, it's like, it's nothing grown, something strange. It's in a leaf of an olive and you can just eat them if you have an olive tree or you can make a tincture out of them or you can make them into a capsule form. But olive leaf is very powerful. You're looking at echinacea. One of the big ones is echinacea. Um, astragalus is very popular. Uh, and again, I've got different products up here we can kind of walk through. Uh, Camu, camu. Vitamin C is really important, especially when you're doing it with something like scurvy or a lot of the, uh, even Ebola with um, vitamin C can be very powerful against Ebola. Uh, when the scurvy came around, you're looking at the <laughs> vitamin C was eaten up very quickly in the body and you, the people who had more vitamin C or a lot of vitamin C pumped into them when they were going through scurvy, they were able to heal because their body was able to utilize the vitamin C faster than the scurvy could use it. Uh, and so we look at that vitamin C very popular and very important in fighting any kind of viral infection. Uh, vitamin C is found in many foods. Uh, in my book, by the way, if you look in the vitamin section and the mineral section, we tell you, we suggest different places that you can find these vitamins and minerals in foods and food sources. We're not all about run to a grocery store and spend $14 on some, you know, magnesium oxide or something, which is just a rock ground up in a blender and then put in a capsule for you to spend a lot of money on. It's not going to do you any good. Um, calcium carbonate, 
please don't buy any of that at a, at a health food store or a grocery store because it's just chalk. Go lick some chalk at a school. It's the same exact thing. There's 300 forms for it. Or I don't, know, I don't suggest eating rocks. And so when I say vitamin C, you want vitamin C from the food source. And that all happens because of the wonderful plant systems and root systems that, that were made by Mother Nature. And those roots can literally go down in the ground, grab essential elements, and then pull those rocks up into its system and create bioavailable minerals. Only way to get minerals from anywhere is from the ground and it's through food. Know that. So vitamin C, you might look at food sources for vitamin C. Our favorite is Camu Camu. Camu Camu grows in the rainforest. Many people will sell Camu Camu. Uh, we sell Camu Camu. It's phenomenal. So we definitely get people on a very high Camu Camu diet uh, when they're pumping up their immune system or if they're fighting something. Uh, then we do a lot of vitamin C. And there's um, Mega Food makes a great vitamin C. We've been using that for about six years now and it's, it's awesome. Uh, we take it as a family as well and we eat a lot of vitamin C, but we're always pumping up more vitamin C. You'll know when you have enough vitamin C when you have diarrhea, which isn't going to happen very often. Okay, so your body will just get rid of it. It's water soluble. It'll go ahead and get through the body. And vitamin C taken intravenously is phenomenal. By the way, a note on this, cancer cells have 15 times the amount of receptor sites, those antennas, for sugar than a healthy cell. So if you have a cancer cell, it has 15 times more receptor sites for sugar than a healthy cell would. So do you think that cancer cell craves sugar? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, hungry, honey. Okay. And so if you have cancer growing in the body, what are you going to crave? Sugar. Not just sugar like white cane sugar, but grain. All of your grain turns into sugar. I don't care if it's wheat bread, spelt bread, sprouted wheat, I don't care what, it's going to turn into sugar. And so you have any kind of oatmeal and grain in the body, it's going to feed your cancer cells. So vitamin C, awesome fact, vitamin C has a, it will, it will bind the receptor sites just like sugar will. So you, if you take a whole bunch of vitamin C, you can kill off your cancer cells, right? You can do different things with vitamin C. Of course, I'd intravenously and go online and don't believe a thing I say because I'm just a holistic healthcare practitioner and I'm not a medical doctor. Anyhow, so there is my disclaimer. <laughs> this is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, I hope you're entertained. Anyhow, and so, but intravenous vitamin C in many countries is used for that reason. So cancer cells have 15 times the amount of sugar sites. Now, every doctor in the world, every oncologist on the face of the planet knows that sugar feeds cancer. Everyone, every one of them knows it. Because what did they give you before they give you a PET scan? Radioactive sugar, radioactive glucose. When they give you radioactive glucose and you've been fasting, then your body gets the radioactive glucose and all of your cancer cells are like, whoa, thank you, mama. I love sugar. And they throw you through the gamma ray scan and boom, gamma rays form and choop, they can tell exactly where the cancer is in your body. And at the end of the scan, they give you some Hershey's kisses because you made it out alive. We have some problems in, around certain countries, don't we? <laughs> so anyhow, so sugar is an enemy to the immune system. You must eliminate sugar, and that does mean you cut down your grain consumption. Two fantastic things happen. You are able to star you starve your cancer cells, period, and you get rid of candida. And then you strengthen your immune system. So really you have a win-win-win situation here. So eliminating sugar, very important. So getting rid of candida, eliminating sugar. And then the different products that we have spread out here, elderberry. Elderberry is one of my favorite. Elderberry syrup is phenomenal. It also has the flowers in it. Using ashwanga is going to be very powerful. A lot of the Chinese herbs. Uh, doing a lot of probiotics. And probiotics can be found in the natural probiotics that you'll find in usually your refrigerated section. But then your kombucha, your uh, kefir, the products that are uh, bringing good bacteria. Here we go, the whole bacteria thing again, our, our single cell organisms. We're going to put millions of bacteria back into your gut. Well, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> Didn't you just kill them off with your antibacterial soap? Whoa, yes you did, thank you. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna put them back in because you're killing them. So you wanna put these good healthy bacteria into the body because you need them. Um, by the way, an antibiotic only kills bacteria. An antibiotic can never kill a virus. But don't you hear all the time them giving, giving antibiotics for things like a cold, you know, or a flu? They're giving you antibiotics, it can't, it's impossible. Thank goodness placebo effect works, right? <laughs> I'm taking antibiotics. 
So it's going to go away. Well, not really, but you're thinking it, so I guess it works because, you know, as you think it, you are, so that was good. Placebo works, okay? Gotta love placebo. <laughs> I know. Yes, sir. Mostly they're just worried if you're having whooping cough or not. Yeah, exactly. They want to have whooping cough, but still, it's a, it's definitely they, they have found it affects the detrimental. Bacteria, so. the, and the, the and in the book, I've got an entire section on antibiotics, when to use them, when not to use them, and then if you've used them, how to restore your body. It can take eight months to ten months to restore the body's bacterial account after using antibiotics. It is that that detrimental to the body. So, it, so if you've had people that are on rounds and rounds of antibiotics, can you imagine their bacterial estate? So they don't have their healthy, beneficial bacteria to help them fight. Uh, you know, and build up their immune system. Uh, anyhow, okay, a uh, couple other products. Of course, using mushrooms. I'm a big medicinal mushroom person. My favorite mushroom book ever is Mycelium Running. I love this book. But using astragalus and reishi, uh, we just ordered an extremely large amount of, of uh, shaga. We ordered in from Russia, from a very safe place from Russia, and we are in love. You should have seen us. We were like little kids when we got this big box of, of shaga, and you're probably going, she's thrilled about a medicinal mushroom. Yes! I love shaga. Uh, I take it every day. And so very important to learn your medicinal mushrooms. And some of them are labeled. They'll have strengthening uh, testimonies on the, the boxes, kind of alluding as to what they're good for. Uh, so you can look for that. Of course, your coconut oil. Cranberry is very important. Um, and I actually printed a list. Uh, let me just read through it so that I don't miss something. Now, in our own, well, I'll talk about what we're doing in our family right now uh, to protect ourselves in a little bit. Okay, so again, staying warm, making sure the body stays nice and warm. Your immune system is very healthy in a warm state. When you get cold, your immune system can decrease by 30%. Literally, if your temperature drops one degree, you can lose so much of your immunity. You increase the core temperature of your body and you can increase the immunity strength by 30%. So it goes both ways and your body is constantly trying to keep a core temperature, right? Your thyroid is very busy at that. Your adrenal cortex is very busy. Your, your whole body is, very, is trying to keep your body at a very warm temperature because if you're at a warm temperature, you have a strong immune system. People who get really cold, you need to get on circulation immediately. You need to do cayenne. You need to get on blood circulation. You need to do something. If your fingers are cold and your hands are cold all the time, your immune system is not healthy, period. And so you need to strengthen that immune system by moving the blood and increasing the core temperature. The Yarrow works incredible. Again, the saunas, biomats, using the Richway Thermotherapy. We do a lot with biomats. Um, look for ways to increase that core temperature of the body so that you can resist illness. It works this way. You were born with a kick butt immune system. You just need to strengthen it and not suppress it. Uh, anyhow, so I want to make sure I mention that. The, uh, I'm going to list a couple things here uh, that are all, these are antibacterial and antiviral. So at the top of your list, there's a couple things that I would start using if I were you uh, pretty immediately. Uh, ginger. And you can do ginger. Now for ginger, I, I'm a foodie, right? I've got a 600 page recipe book coming out very soon. Aren't you all excited, right? I love food. I'm a chef. I love it. So and I love making food. Ginger, I'm also lazy, right? I got too many kids. I, I have no time to like peel ginger. That would just drop me nuts. So I wash ginger and throw the whole darn thing in there. So like don't become all concerned about, about, you know, peeling every single thing that you use or peeling, like who peels almonds? All these recipes are like, and then soak your almonds, peel your almonds. Really? Like who wants to peel 400 almonds to make a mayonnaise? You know, I'm like, just do it brown. I don't care. Yeah, so anyhow. So your garlic and your ginger, your piece of ginger, just throw it, start throwing. And you know what? You might not be used to ginger. So tomorrow morning in your morning drink, throw a little piece of ginger. Get used, you're going to love ginger. You're going to start craving ginger. You're going to actually blend water and lemons and honey and ginger today because you love ginger so much. You're going to love it. So go ahead and use ginger. Start using it. Phenomenal product. Garlic, of course. Now, I don't subscribe to the whole, here, taste this odorless garlic pill. If it's lost the odor, it's also lost its fighting capability. Okay? That's just mother nature for you. And so garlic, and when we've worked with people who have had staph infection, phenomenal results. We've, at, we have them taking garlic immune systems. We have them taking 10, 15 cloves of garlic a day, and boom, their staph infections have just disappeared. They're using an olive leaf, of course, as well with that, but that garlic is extremely powerful. So garlic is a big, big one. Uh, cranberry, can you believe it? Cranberry, also antibacterial and antiviral. How fun is that? Go, go get some frozen cranberries. Uh, we have people come in here all the time for gout. Do you need blood cherry juice? No. Why would you want to get pasteurized juice full of sugar in your body to get rid of gout? I mean, it'll help a little bit. 
go to Costco, go somewhere and get black cherries, $10 for a three pound bag, Karen's favorite. Okay, I use them all the time. <laughs> They're organic and I love them. So, you know, get the cherries in the body, get the cranberries, throw the cranberries in your smoothies. And if you've never done cranberries in your smoothies, they're wonderful. So start buying out cranberries and stocking up. <laughs> echinacea. Echinacea is very powerful. We use echinacea a lot. Now here's the trick with echinacea. Echinacea is a very powerful herb, but your body can get really used to it and then not recognize its healing uh, ability. So in, in our home and in our business and our wellness centers, we recommend echinacea for maybe four days on, a couple days off. Okay, three days on, you know, three days off, four days on. You want to spirit it around a little bit. You know, so, but if I, if my kids are going to go to the zoo, they are taking echinacea. <laughs> if they're going to go to the museum, they are taking echinacea. If we're going to go to Samoa to watch our daughter get married, oh, we're taking echinacea. Okay. Cause like, we're, we're taking it. Cause I don't know what's going to be on that plane. So we are always building that body up with echinacea as one of the key herbs. Um, colloidal silver is a big thing. We've been using colloidal silver in our family for probably 23 years. We do not use it much. I have a lot of it because it's very powerful, but I don't use chitol silver unless nothing else is working because it will kill viruses, period. It's phenomenal for a lot of things, but I want the body's immune system to fight back. So unless you're dealing with a serious virus, you don't, you don't, you don't need to take it all the time. But when you have that virus that's, that's taken over the body, then you definitely want to use something strong like colloidal silver. So definitely, we own a lot. I'd recommend all of you get a quart. Get, my, my gallon was 240 bucks. I, got, I mean, <laughs> but I got a very powerful, there's different, when you come into colloidal silver, then you're looking at, okay, well, I can make mine at home. Oh, let's not do that. I don't know. Make sure you know what you're doing because you might get the wrong particle size and then you are really screwing up your body and you've got heavy metals in your body. And we're kind of anti-heavy metal-ish because <laughs> heavy metals do what? Suppress the immune system. So you have to get the right nanobacterial size. You have to get the right, not bacterial, but the right nano size of silver. So do your study on colloidal silver. You can check out what we sell. We can order you gallons of colloidal silver as well and we'll give you a very fair rate. We'll give it to you cheaper than if you buy it online uh, through the manufacturer. I just want you to have it. So just, just hook me up. We'll hook you up. Uh, okay, and then food you can be eating. Turmeric, obviously, onions, peppermint, cinnamon. Uh, we recently went back to Wisconsin, and uh, we're heading back again in a couple weeks, and I'm harvesting all the peppermint that I have in all my herbal beds, and I'm making tinctures. Tinctures of peppermint, tinctures of echinacea, tinctures of my, my sage. So you want to, oregano, oh my gosh, oregano is phenomenal. I've got a lot of oregano in Wisconsin. So we go ahead and we harvest that. To make a tincture is so easy. Like you're going to wonder why you spend money buying my tinctures, okay? <laughs> so it's like you're going to make them at home. Here's how you make them. It's really easy. You get a dark bottle or you can use a quart jar and just keep it in a dark place and you literally stuff it full. Some people will just use like three quarters of a quart jar full. We're pretty intense so we use a lot more herbs and we put a bunch of fresh herbs in that quart jar. Like I just made comfrey, a tincture of comfrey for the TNC class in Wisconsin before I flew back. And we went ahead and cut the comfrey up to release more, right before we tinctured it, to release a lot more of the medicinal qualities. And then you cover it in vodka. We use organic grape alcohol because organic grape alcohol is uh, hypoallergenic. So we use the organic grape alcohol. We covered all of the herbs in that. And then as it sat for the next month, you shake it. You shake it every single day. You keep shaking that, shaking that, shaking it. And then after 30 days, 60 days, every herb tinctures at a different amount of, of time. Uh, then you go ahead and you drain that. You can press it. You can even burn the ash and put it back in, but we don't do that. We just press really hard. We strain it. And then that tincture is what all the medicinal quality is in. That's how you make a tincture. So go home and make tinctures of peppermint. Go home and get your herbs and tincture them. You can use fresh or dried. So you, you, you would use less dried uh, herb if you're getting it dried. Uh, and then you'd use more if you're doing it fresh. Get the, all the leaves. Yep, all the leaves. When I go out, I harvest the whole thing, and I've got just loads of oregano, and I'll just shove them in there fresh. I can, yep, you can throw the stem in. Absolutely. You can throw the stem in there. You can throw everything in there. Just make sure it's minced up nice and small. I only mince it. You don't have to, but I do because I believe you get more medicinal quality out of it. If you're using vodka, then go ahead and make sure you get an 80 proof, you know, at least, so you can do that. At our TNC class, it was really quite funny. One of the ladies who was taking our course um, kind of changed... <clears throat> jobs completely because she also runs a bar, right? And so now she's now a therapeutic nutritional counselor selling essential oils and being like help, helping the world. She is an amazing woman. But I came to the tincture. I'm like, oh, crud, I forgot to get the vodka. Well, I got that covered, went out and had a 100 proof vodka sitting in her car. I'm like, well, that's crazy. I'm like, okay, you know, let's make a tincture. So that was, it was really, really fun. So it's just, it's just fun.
Uh, okay, dokie. So, um, clove, cinnamon, um, golden seal, marshmallow root, uh, and then the really big stuff. If you're really getting it, if you're getting hit with a viral infection, uh, you feel one coming on, you're getting kind of the icky icky there, you want to look at cat's claw. The Uni de Glada. You really need that. The Paul Diarco. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal program. Um, I mentioned the elderberry. Uh, again, I mentioned the, the olive leaf and whatnot. Oregano oil. And oregano oil is one of those things that we've been making and using for, for decades, actually. Uh, and oregano oil is very powerful. You don't need a lot. So it's also very expensive. This is different than the essential oil. We're using a tincture, which to me is preferable uh, in, when it comes to oregano oil. And you would use like, just a couple drops uh, of oregano oil underneath the tongue. And you do that like three or four or five times a day. But oregano oil is very powerful. I put oregano oil in my, in my water when I'm traveling. I'll also use oregano oil. So it's very, uh, very powerful. So do some research. You're going to love it. Uh, anyhow, and then of course the big things. Building up your vitamin D store in the body, one, uh, one tenth of your cells, of your entire uh, DNA needs vitamin, uh, needs your vitamin D. So vitamin D uh, works with many of your genes. Again, a third of your genes are dependent on vitamin D in order to function. And so vitamin D is crucial to get. You can get vitamin D, of course, the number one way, read the book, you'll find all these wonderful notes, oh, okay, is the sunshine. Oh my gosh, yeah, put yourself outside in the sun, get naked, no one's going to care. Well, unless you have really weird neighbors. And you also I get almost naked. Get outside in the sun as often as you can and as much as you can. If it's winter, then get into a good vitamin D light. Uh, get, buy some vitamin D light. You can take vitamin D orally. You can take a good food-based not synthetic. Okay, we don't do synthetics or rocks, guys. Raise your right hand. I will not take another rock supplement. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so no more of that. Sorry for the sales of those who sell them, but uh, you want to take a vitamin D that is a food base. And then when you take that vitamin D, what we recommend, what I recommend as a natural health practitioner is at least 1,000 I use per 25 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 25 pounds, which none of you do, you would only take 1,000 I use. And that's just the typical. Now, I've taught you uh, how to do testing on yourself, how to sway test, muscle test, dows, divine. I, we do it all, apply kinesiology. That video is now online for free. So if you missed that class here or in other locations, you can go online and watch. It's about an hour long, lots of fun. But learn how to test yourself. I test my children every day how much vitamin D3 they need because we have a vitamin D bed. All of my teenagers and adults are in the vitamin D bed on a regular basis. And so sometimes they don't need any vitamin D. Sometimes they need more. So I'm always testing my children and you can all test your own family. You can test your animals and your plants for Pete's sake. It's, we're just cells and you can test your cells because we're all alive and we're all entangled and I love that class, okay? So come to my frequency classes, but go and learn how to test at home so you can do some of these tests. Vitamin C, I mentioned earlier. So vitamin C, B12, very key ingredient. I use um, methylcobalamin and I use it in the ear patch. So I have B12 behind my ear at least three days of the week, uh, sometimes four, and so that's how I get my B12. You can also take B12 orally, but definitely research B12 uh, because you want a methylcobalamin because it donates methyl groups. And again, that's important information. Study more in the book uh, if interested. Um, and then zinc, of course zinc. Zinc is a big one. Uh, there's a few things in our family that we take on a regular basis. We have a little tray on our morning breakfast table that has zinc, magnesium, Magnesium, vitamin D3 and vitamin C right now. It also has some uh, some of the essential oils like Pro Shield from a male. Uh, On Guard is made by doTERRA, but find a good essential oil that you like to use and use some of those essential oils to help protect the body. I will tell you I'm not huge into essential oils internally, so make sure you're testing them because I have worked with MDs and we've 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 definitely worked and there's cadavers that are loaded with essential oil in their liver because it never got digested properly. So I'm not a big fan of a lot of essential oil going through the digestive system, much more so respiratory. So we've got diffusers going almost all of the time, not only in our home, but in our offices, because we're always getting those essential oils, highest frequency on earth, right, uh, into, our, into our cells through the diffuser. And we have a lot of essential oil classes, so just see me after class if you're interested in those. Doesn't magnesium have to be a certain form? Mm -hmm, it does. Mm -hmm. Magnesium, it has, to be, it has to be food, number one. Uh, and magnesium is very helpful for the bowels, so if you're having constipation issues, magnesium is the bowel mineral. It's also very good for the heart. We recently worked with someone who had come to us who had heart palpitations uh, and had AFib. And, uh, and he's like, well, I'm on these two different medications now and I want to get off of them, but my wife doesn't want me to. So what can I do without her knowing? I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> 
so I can do this, okay? We can help heal you without your wife knowing him. And so I said, well, here's what I wanted you to do. And I tested him out. He needed like four of our magnesium capsules uh, a day. And so I said, just do this for a month. And magnesium is the heart mineral. So guess what? All his AFib disappeared. He went into the doctor and his doctor's like, well, I don't know what you did, but it's completely gone. He's like, hey, but the doctor, of course, told him, stay on your medication just in case, whatever. But anyhow, so um, we had gotten rid of all of it by using magnesium. So the benefits of, and that's also cool, the benefits of certain minerals amplify through the whole body. Oh my gosh, you're taking magnesium and now you can poop and your heart feels better. Oh man, you can like run longer. Your whole body feels great, like relax. You don't have any more restless legs. All of this from magnesium. And please, this is why I wrote the book, okay? In this book, in the magnesium, in the um, mineral section of the book alone, this book took 10 years to write. The last 18 months, I've been hidden away from my family writing this, but you literally can go into the mineral chart. I'm a chart chick, man. There's charts everywhere. You've got your trace minerals. You've got your macro minerals, and you can find any mineral, and you can find where to find it. But not only that, we've told you, wh like, what are the deficiencies? What would be going on in your life if you didn't have enough boron? <laughs> I tell you, oh my gosh. So you can like self-diagnose some things in, in the here and then, oh my gosh, I just need more boron so I can just eat blank. I just need more magnesium so I can eat this. Oh, chocolate, What's, well that's a win-win situation. I need more cacao. Okay, so you're gonna be able to find out for your vitamins and minerals. So again, that's, that's in the book because we want you to take something home uh, that you can just learn how the body functions in one book. How do all the organs, glands, and tissues function? So now we talk about the serious part of the whole presentation, right? Ebola. That's spreading. And uh, a lot of people are being shut up for talking about Ebola. Uh, they don't want, you don't want, my goodness, you don't want to tell people how to heal it. <laughs> so I won't. I just told you now how to do that, okay? How to prevent viruses and how to get rid of viruses. And Ebola is a virus. Okay, so there we go. So I'm not, what I'm talking about right now is what happens if there's an Ebola breakout in your community. What do you do at school? And I'll tell you what are, what's going on. As of today, we've got 4,500 people that have died from Ebola and over 8,500 that have been infected with it. Uh, Ebola has been around since 1976. So this is nothing new, uh, but it's always been in smaller, uh, smaller communities. The, um, the infection rate uh, and then compared to the survival rate, survival rate can be uh, quite as high as 86%. Uh, I'm sorry, the death rate is as high as 86%. Right now, the World Wide Health Organization is estimating that their death rate right now is 70% of the people who get it do die. Now, I do believe, as I stated before the class, that Ebola is, is obviously in America. It's going to be in most of the countries. I believe it's going to spread, but I do not believe we're going to have the same mortality rate. I believe that we have some advantages. Number one, you're sitting in a class and there's a whole bunch of products right here that you can take home and use for your immune system. Building the immune system and keeping clean and sanitary are very important. That's not to say that the people who have contracted this are sick or have really, you know, are, are, have been unclean people. That's not what I'm projecting. I'm saying as a family, what we're doing, that's what we're going to come from on this, is we are very cautious of what we do. We absolutely are always washing our hands and we never use antibacterial soap, by the way, ever. But we definitely wash our hands all of the time. We're very aware of how to keep something clean. We use a lot of bleach. I have invested in a large, large amount of bleach that we keep in our wellness centers. So we spray after most of the people that come here. Uh, we also have stopped using uh, vitamin D bed. We have, you no longer can use in our wellness centers right now, vitamin D bed or a sauna or the foot bath because uh, viruses are very um, transferable in bodily fluids. I would highly recommend staying away from things like athletic clubs where there's lots of sweat, um, walking in the shower where there's a lot of people that are, that are sweaty. Uh, so be aware of, okay, where are their excretions from other people's bodies that could affect me. I think that would be something that you want to consider uh, being, being, being considered of and, and cautious of. Uh, when it comes to uh, the, the being airborne, if you're in a facility that has a lot of uh, people around, you may want to consider wearing a mask. You may want to avoid those situations. And I, I, I mean, obviously this can spread extremely quickly. You can be in a church building and there's 200 people or 300 people in the church building and you can spread any kind of virus very quickly by someone coughing in the building and then it's airborne, uh, especially with a poor circulation system. I was recently in the church building and um, I went to the leader of the church and I said, actually, sir, um, we probably won't attend here because the circulation and the air quality is so poor. And of course, I can sense that because I'm pretty sensitive to quality of air. Most of you can be. Um, we actually were in a very uh, prestigious building recently. I'd spoken at a very prestigious building and uh, they went on and on about how their Green Star program and how healthy and beneficial their, their building was and it was all green and lead green or whatever is right lead green and 
this. I sat there, I'm like, you have the poorest air quality I've ever had in a building. Oh, but these are, I said, do any of your windows open? Oh no, we never open windows. I'm like, oh. and there's no plants in the entire building. I'm like, okay. So I would, it's like a coffin. I was like, I'm walking in a coffin. I'm glad, I'm glad it's all green. That's wonderful, you know, but I'm gonna die. So, yeah. um, so I gave him a presentation and left. So it really, you need to be aware of the, of the, the, the situation that you're in. Um, anyhow, so we can, we can talk more about some of that after class or even in class if you have questions on what to do uh, because that is just, it is something that's there. And again, as I started the class before the video presentation that uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I do believe in some of those theories, but I'm not one of those. I've studied um, emergency preparedness for about 24 years now. I used to present to thousands of people on how to prepare in case of nuclear disaster, how to purify your water from anywhere. I'll, I'll gladly give you all of the articles I've written on any of that uh, so that you're aware of that and you can get those through one of the TNCs as well. Uh, but you do want to, at this point, most likely have things in your home. You want to have food and water in your home so that you can isolate yourself from the community. If you, number one, if you have someone in the home who gets infected with a virus that you're not sure of, you don't want them to go to a hospital. You don't want them to go somewhere where they can be spreading it. Um, well, you might want to be near a hospital. I'm not, I'm not really big on hospitals. So I think that's one of the scariest places to take someone who's sick because there's so much that spreads to a hospital so quickly, but you need to make that discernment in your own area. You might have incredible personnel in your hospital and they've done a really great job at keeping things clean. Uh, we just we just are probably not positive what we would do in that situation. But we are aware that we have things in our locations around the country and um, and hopefully you do too that we would be able to survive and live uh, in that area and be be safe for a quantity of time. Um, that's so definitely encourage you to, to look into providing some things for your family. And again I can provide provide information uh, to you after class as well. Yes, ma'am. If you're going to be using masks, be sure to change them as soon as they're wet. Yes, yep, exactly. So if you're using masks, change them as soon as you're wet. And they have, they have some great recommendation for masks online uh, that you can purchase. You can purchase in large quantities or just enough for your family and to be changing. Um, so thank you very much. How am I in time, Jen? Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. To get your magnesium, how about Epsom salt baths? Yes, Epsom salt baths are fantastic. So getting an Epsom salt, and uh, ready. So the things you want to look at right now is you want to stop suppressing your immune system and you want to detoxify the body. And then you want to hot yoga. Uh, hot yoga, same thing. You're all sweating in hot yoga. Who doesn't love hot yoga, right? It's phenomenal. Your body just feels incredible when you're done because you're moving your lymphatic system. You feel incredible and you're getting all this oxygen <gasps> to every single cell in the body. But then you're in a room full of people who are sweating and you're all touching the same things. And so at other times when there's not a viral infection or something that's, that's worrying people, then it'd be wonderful. But right now, again, I would avoid it, but that's just me because I can see. And again, Ebola you're looking at, with Ebola in particular, there's a long incubation period. So someone can be infected and you have no idea for 21 days what's going on. And that's why we have so many people in isolation right now because we don't know what's going on. You can't just, and some, and some people will, will just not, not everyone who contracts Ebola dies. There have been studies done where people have had Ebola and they can tell in the body when the Ebola came and they can also tell when it was killed off. And people have worked right through having Ebola and never knew it and didn't spread it because their bodies created the antibodies immediately. Their immune system was able to fight that off. So strengthening the immune system is the number one thing that all of us can do. And we might be exposed to it and not know it. Uh, and it, it's, it's, is it scary? Yes, it's scary. Who's not afraid of something coming to you? Well, you've got a few people on the internet. It'll never happen in America. This is just just like you all out. And they're all, okay, whatever. Okay. You can't tell me they don't think about it when they go out to eat or when they're sitting on the toilet okay wondering who was there first I, you can't tell me that people are not aware of this or becoming more aware and really uh, something really nice that I've uh, that I think we need to be aware of is okay yeah you might get really nervous and you might like get all your supplies and increase your immune system and be prepared so what's wrong with that? Even if you don't get Ebola, what if and nothing ever happens in your house or your household or your, who cares? You're feeling better, your immune system's fantastic and you, heck, you have a little bit of storage. So you know you're safe. I mean, so like, what's the bad, what's the bad part about it? The bad part about it is if people are gonna capitalize and make a bunch of money on it, 
which is why we didn't charge for this class. I want this information for free. I wasn't going to, I usually charge for my bacterial and parasite and fluke class because it's a lot of information and this is what I've done for 20 years. But I was like, no way, I'm not going to charge for this class because I want you to have it. And I want you to give it to your friends on YouTube and get people aware of the difference in, between viral infections and bacterial infections. So please share this tomorrow when it comes out. Anybody, share it with anybody if you've enjoyed it, if it's been, not, if it's been helpful. Uh, but you do, you have to be cautious. Uh, and can you be afraid? Yes, you can be afraid. There's, there's mornings I wake up at three and four in the morning. Number one, we live so close to our health center that it gets, you know, what do we do if our children are close or they're working there? You know, what are some of our precautions? So we've taken some precautions in both of our health centers now. We may take some more, but again, it's just, where do you put your energy? Into fear or do you put it into awareness? And quite honestly, I'm going to put a lot more into the awareness side of it. But you bet I'll pull our children out of school in a heartbeat like they did in Texas. So many children were pulled out of the Texas schools when they were exposed to Ebola with the children. I'm right there. I've homeschooled before and I can gladly do it again. So um, that's my first, my first priority. Any, okay, any strange questions? Any random questions that I might be able to help you with? Yes? I have a son in Russia on a mission. Mm -hmm. He's been sick for a month and a half. Oh, gosh. They did a bunch of blood tests. They thought maybe it was mono, but it came back not mono. They still don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Again, strengthen the immune system. That's all we can do is strengthen that immune system. Get them eating better foods, have them strengthen that immune system. And that's going to be the only thing that you can really, really do to help. Any specific things like I could mail to him? I don't have a lot of room to mail. Oh, sure. And, like, and, but just tell him what to buy. You know, have him get out there and get a lot of garlic. Have him get, a, you know, there's certain products that he would want to have a lot of to help strengthen his immune system. And we have those online. There'll be a sheet with a bunch of information available online as well. There's also a set of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people who've written a lot about Ebola right now. So you can go to biodefense.com with Mike Adams. You can go uh, all over the place and find a lot of information and recommendations on what to do uh, in case of Ebola or a poor immune system. And he could maybe use the quadrilateral. Oh yeah, cryo silver would be fantastic, if it, yeah, especially if it's viral, if we don't know what's going on. You can always send a hair and saliva and find someone out there who, either here we can do it, or just find someone there who can test them on a biomeridian machine. You can definitely do that. Do cranberries need to be, I know it's better, always better organic, but there's some... Mm -hmm. the, the EWG.org website, Environmental Workmen's Organization, phenomenal website, and they have a recommendation of Dirty Dozen, the Clean 15, and if you also look further on that website, you'll find a whole list, and you can find cranberries, oranges are like a 55, you know, so you can actually find where all these different fruits and vegetables are, more than just the Clean uh, 15 and the Dirty Dozen. So if you pop on their website, they're a great resource for watching food. And by the way, viruses definitely can get passed on food. Food. Oh my gracious me, ever go to a restaurant? Now, number one, I own restaurants, okay? So I'm very familiar with the code of restaurants. After going through all of my management for restaurants, I decided I would never eat at one again because I know what can happen behind the door, right? I'm like, oh, so that I even eat anywhere. And I only eat like two places ever do I go out to eat at uh, um, because I'm too afraid of what's going on behind the door. I know the people at the two places I eat, and I'll tell you where that is after, after the video is over, but uh, I know them, so I'm okay eating there. Anyhow, and so you get someone who's sick or really needs their job, and even though they're coughing and they're starting to vomit and they have, you know, uh, sores breaking out, they're going to still show up at, at work because they need their job. And now you've just been infected with whatever virus they had on your food. So it's not, this is, and, and, and virus can live in any cell. So it can live in a plant cell. A virus can live in a human cell uh, or an, an animal cell. And human cells are the most prominent, of course. And so the, that human cell and that, and that, hum, and that hu human and animal cell, that's where your viruses can live and they can proliferate. You know, he sneezes, they cough, they just talk out loud like this, and there is saliva coming out of their body, and it's landing on your food. So you have to be aware. So did we stop eating out? Oh my gosh, yeah, except for today, that, you know, that was it. We haven't gone anywhere because we're, we're just a little bit not okay with that uh, right now. So yeah, very much, the, you've been told a lot of weird things from the CDC, from the World Health Organization, things that are very controversial. Uh, but if you just go back to virologists, you look at, at viruses in particular, and you're gonna see that they can transfer on a lot of you know, sur surfaces. They do transfer in the air. That you, know, you can get them in the food supplies. You know, sorry, I know we were told by our government that it can't transfer in the food supply, but that's not correct. You can, if you've owned a restaurant or worked in a restaurant or eaten at a restaurant, you now know that that is true. So it's just being aware of how can that come into our body. So what's the best way to clean your fruits and 
We right, we soak all of our, we clean all of our fruits and vegetables obviously with soap and water. A lot of them will use bleach. Bleach is used, a little bit of bleach in a container in a sink of water, and you can get tester strips so you can test you know the strength of the bleach, uh, which we'd encourage you to do. That's what we use in our kitchens. Uh, melons in particular, we always want to bleach the melon before you eat it. Uh, it kills off mold and it kills a lot of the things that can be growing on a melon. By law, any melon you eat anywhere in a restaurant needs to be soaked in bleach before it can be cut into. That's just the standard. Standard American law. Okay. Yep, and so there's just soaking that. And then we bleach will help get rid of viruses. So we make a bleach water fresh every day. Uh, so we'll take water and we'll put, and we only use, we use a squirt bottle, uh, and then we put a little bit of bleach in the squirt bottle. We test it with our tester strips, and that's what we use to sanitize the wellness centers um, all day long. So, yep, Clorox bleach. Mm -hmm. And then, so I'd, I'd recommend you get some masks. I certainly would. I would highly recommend you get some gloves. I definitely would. And I'd recommend you get some gallons of bleach. So you've got some, period. You know, I'd recommend you get some products and start taking them right away so you can build your immune system. I'd recommend you get rid of candida. I'd recommend you, start, well, what am I recommending? You're building your immune system. How often is that? You're being protective. You're being proactive. That's what I'd recommend. Can it transfer in the water supply? Uh -huh. Oh, definitely. What doesn't? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> have you ever looked at your, you know, uh, and by the way, we have a special new meter. You're welcome to bring your waters in. We, we, we can test uh, the total dissolved solids in your water. So if you're getting distilled water from somewhere, I'll tell you if it's really distilled or not and what's still in it and what's coming from the plastic. So there's some, there's some you know, you, you're told one thing, but you can always test and find out what's really going on by utilizing procedures that can test. So awareness, awareness is where you need to, we need to be. And we need to pull together. You do, you need to pull together and support each other. You're not all crazy for coming to the class or watching the video. These are things that are important. And understanding how bacteria and viruses differ, understanding how to build your strong immune system, understanding acquired immunity and um, natural immunity, thank you very much. And the artificial immunity, very important. Understanding how your T cells working. No, you have to have all of your amino acids in order for you to build proteins to fight the virus. Means you're eating lots more fruits and vegetables, aren't you? Because all protein on earth comes from plants. All of your amino acids you need come from plants. So now you eat a lot more plants. So you have a lot more protein in the body. We'd highly recommend you get rid of mucus in the diet. So no more sucking out of a cow. Give up the wet nurse. Okay, we're over it, girls and boys. Uh, and I definitely would limit how many animals you're eating. I mean, it's nice. You want to graze on some animals once in a while, but then make sure it's a grass-fed organic animal that doesn't have biocides, larvicides. Like, do you really want larvicides for dinner? Hi, honey. I made you a steak. It's full of larvicides. Okay. Ah! So, you know, make sure you're feeding something to your cells that it can digest. And if you're looking to detox, we take a lot of that heavy weight off of the body. Again, it's a big picture. It's a big picture. If you live in fear, oh, and you're all tense, and then what happens to the body? If you're in fear, you're in sympathetic mode. You cannot ever heal. You can never heal in fear. Whole section on fear in my book. Fear is the worst enemy to cancer. And what's the first thing they do when you get cancer? Put fear in you. You're going to get it even worse. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fly off the handle. So you must, because once you're in fear, you're in sympathetic state. So yeah, you can all go home in fear. Oh my gosh, the virus. But we had a lot of fear over what? The West Nile virus, right? Smallpox. We've had fear before. Fear doesn't do anybody any good. But awareness, awareness does. <sighs> well, don't you just feel more aware now of how the body functions? Isn't this just fun to learn? So, well, thank you all very much for coming. We will have a little bit of question and answer after the class right now. Uh, but I do want to end the class and thank you all for coming. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome.